coconut. Hey, everybody. I'm Dan Davidson. And I'm Bill Smith, and it's time for the news from TrekNews.net. What? What? Banning the Alpha Quadrant. For all the news on all the Star Trek shit. It's TrekNews.net. Barbecue sauce. <laughs> online at treknews.net hey everybody welcome to the news from treknews.net the oldest brand new star trek news podcast from trek geeks for the week of february 4th 2021 dan first up as you and i celebrate black history month here on trek geeks it seems only fitting that a brand new documentary is being released featuring the legendary actress who is the topic of this week's episode with our special guests the sci-fi sisters Oh my gosh, could you ask for any better perfect timing for this one, man? Yes, a new documentary entitled A Woman in Motion, Nichelle Nichols, Star Trek, and the Remaking of NASA will be available for screening in select theaters through Fathom Events. And it's an inspiring story of the actress's successful efforts to change NASA and bring Trek's future of infinite diversity into the space program of her day. And it really is an amazing story of Nichelle's early career all the way up through Star Trek, and then how her life focused on the reshaping of NASA by calling out their lack of diversity and bringing in more women and people of color into reaching for the stars. At its core, this documentary is simply about bringing Jean's vision to a div- of, of a diverse future to reality in our time and is a true celebration of Nichelle and NASA itself. Now, the documentary is expected to be released to video on demand later this year, but you can get more information at Fathom Events website for where it's going to be uh, playing over the next uh, uh, three to five days. I think in the next week or two, they're going to have different uh, uh, dates throughout the country. I love the idea of this documentary. I can't wait to see it. I, I'm going to say... And this may be an unpopular take with some, but I'm going to throw it out there anyway. I do think it's a little tone deaf of Fathom Events to have an in-theater event uh, that's pretty exclusive for however long um, instead of just, you know, finding a way to do this online. I think that's a little crazy given the current climate. I 100% agree. And as a matter of fact, as I was doing research for this story, I kind of had to go back and look a few times to make sure I was seeing it correctly that it was going to be in theaters in different areas in the United States instead of just streaming or pay-per-view on your computer through streaming or however, so that they could still make the money that of course they're, they, they, you know, that's their job is to make money for doing these events. But yeah, a little strange because I'll tell you what, I am not going to a movie theater anytime in the near future. No. And, and that's a shame because under normal circumstances, you and I absolutely would have gone to see this. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. It would have been right there. Yep. Yeah. And we might have even turned it into a Trek Geeks thing. I mean, mm-hmm. you, know, uh, you know, so um, I, I still think that this is content that people should see because I think it's a story that more people need to know about um, as, you know, as, as Star Trek fandom grows and as we are now in the 55th anniversary year of the original series, these are the types of things that people need to remember about Nichelle Nichols, especially. And I'm glad that this is happening. I truly am. It really is neat how her her life really focused in on NASA in these later years of her life and all the tremendous strides that she has helped that organization make to bring people of color uh, into the space program. As a matter of fact, one of the points that they talk about in this documentary, which will be very interesting to see, is one of the low points of this relationship was when challenger exploded in the in 86 86 yeah one of the astronauts on board was a very very dear friend of michelle so i'm 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 really interested to seeing it for all aspects of what she has done both in her career um all the way up through this uh this uh, great redoing of nasa so to speak and also a sad reminder that 35 years ago, this last month, uh, yeah. Challenger unfortunately exploded Very after flat. liftoff. I know it's hard to believe. Uh, really is. But uh, yeah, I actually have a blog about that on the Trek Geeks website, which people can find if they Google for it. Um, but uh, but more about that another time, Dan, as we yeah. move on. Uh, you know, we've seen many Star Trek actors pen their memoirs over the years. I mean, there's William Shatner, Kate Mulgrew obviously come to mind. But now we can add another Trek legend to that list now, can't we? Yeah, we can, uh, kind of. Uh, But then again, what would you expect from the mind of the one and only Brent Spiner? Uh, Brent recently announced that he has penned his own book, and he says, quote, 
I thought maybe I can write something else because I have a story I'd like to tell. Maybe I can combine the two and do a sort of hybrid. It's a little bit of this and a little bit of that, but it's primarily fiction, end quote. So fan fiction, a mem mem noir inspired by true events, will be available in available in October of 2021. And as Spiner says again, quote, there are slices of my own life in it. And then there are also people I have known. It's a mashup. It's a thriller. It's a comedy. It's a dark comedy. And it's partially a memoir, but none of it's real, really, even though a lot of things actually happened. Huh? That sounds <laughs> just like Brent. Yeah. It, uh, now, I was gonna, anyone who has watched or listened to Brent at cons knows his unique sense of humor. So this is going to be a, a very interesting read, I think, man. I, I'm here for this. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, when you sell it like that, I mean, because, I mean, there are, you know, thousands of memoirs out there from people. And, yep, it's a it's a telling of uh, of the things they experienced during their time doing whatever. Yeah. I mean, Shatner has multiple memoirs about various things. Kate Mulgrew has has two now, which are both wonderfully amazing and emotional books. But I mean, when you think of Brent Spiner, you think of, you know, the kind of character he is. And, and I mean that in a positive sense. Right. And this fits him to a T. It really does. Anyone who's seen his web series, Fresh Hell, I think is automatically going to think of that because um, that was also a version of him. Yes. So I, I, I look forward to how funny this could actually be. I think it's going to be really interesting because people that only know Brent from Star Trek know him as Data, where he didn't get to do these type of things. But outside of the Star Trek genre, he's hilarious. He does great impersonations of Patrick Stewart. He, he has people rolling on the floor at conventions laughing so hard. He's got a lot of wit. He's got a lot of sarcasm. He's kind of a young Don Rick- Rickles in some ways when I listen to some of the things he does, and I've always loved that about him, but the, I'm really looking forward to it. And just the the artwork for the cover of this book, fan fiction, yeah. a mem noir, which I can't really even say, um, is, uh, is pretty awesome. <laughs> well, and you know, if if you think about it, I mean, Brent is is uniquely dry in his delivery. Sometimes yeah. there are times where people don't know if he's serious or not, and I think that that's why this book lends so well to that right. that particular uh, avenue. So uh, I can't wait to I, I can't wait to pick it up. I only hope he does an audio version that is equally as dry. Oh yes, absolutely. Because that would be amazing. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. And finally, Dan, Star Trek executive producer Alex Kurtzman. Eh, we've heard of him. I hear he's been fired about eight or nine times, but whatever. <laughs> he's dropped a hint on the season four adversary for Star Trek Discovery. Yeah, he, uh, he did, and it seems like more of a tease than a hint, I think. Uh, in a panel with Deadline, Kurtzman was his usual cryptic self and answering questions. When asked about season four, he said, quote, we're actually exploring, we're diving deep into science in the fourth season in a kind of new and interesting way, end quote. He also said regarding the main adversary of the season that, quote, there have been many kinds of villains over the course of Star Trek. What happens when the villain is not actually any kind of living, breathing entity, but something else? How do you solve that problem? End quote. Now, if you recall, the big reveal of the burn in season three turned out to be very Star Trek. So who knows what this clue from Kurtzman means? Uh, It'll be interesting. Uh, I I can't wait for season four. Um, And Discovery's fourth season is actually shooting right now up in Toronto, Canada, eh? Oh, Canada. Absolutely. Um, it is, you know, I, I guess I'm not surprised that that's the case. Um, but I, I hate it when Kurtzman does this, <laughs> but then he, but he does it all the time. <laughs> that's the thing. He does it all the time. It's like, you know what? Just give us some kind of nugget that, that placates us. Right. Don't go all lost on me and start Ooh. answering questions that cause other questions Why'd you have that to never that? get answered. <laughs> You know, next thing I you know, you. you're going to be looking at Nikki and Paolo on the beach. <laughs> not moving. Not moving. Yeah, not moving. Um, don't get, uh, still one of my favorite episodes of Lost of all time, by the way. It is. It's very um, good. I, I, I'm obviously, I'm, I'm here for season four. I'm, I'm going to watch it. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure I'm going to love it. But um, that this is Kurtzman being Kurtzman, you know? 
Uh, and we've got they just they're start they're filming now. They started a few weeks ago, I think. So yeah. we still got all of the filming to do, all of post production, then the schedule out of when it's actually going to be released. When we get a release date, we got a whole year probably of this kind of stuff being dropped by him. So looking forward to it, pal. Yeah, can't wait. <laughs> and of course, Dan. While this isn't news. We are doing a really cool giveaway from Fansets. Oh, absolutely. Yes, we are. So back in September, if you recall, Star Trek had all kinds of special hashtags that had custom emoji characters. Well, our friends at Fansets have turned those emoji into amazingly awesome pins and they're giving away a full set of them before they even available for purchase. There's Michael Burnham, Jordy LaForge, Spock, Beckett Mariner, Christopher Pike, Jonathan Archer, Benjamin Sisko, Catherine Janeway, and Jean-Luc Picard. Now, all nine emoji character pins will go to one lucky listener. And all you have to do is retweet this week's episode of the news from treknews.net with the hashtag emoji trek, E-M-O-J-I. T-R-E-K. Everyone who does that will be entered into a random drawing to receive the full set of these pins before anybody else even gets to get their grubby little hands on them. Now, this is important. This contest is open to Twitter users in the United States only, and your retweet has to be done by Monday, February 15th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern to qualify. This is going to be a lot of fun. I mean, Fansets told us about this the other day. They said, hey, we want to give away a set of these. They're not going to be available to, to the street uh, until yeah. – well, you know, a couple of months from now, at least. So um, you really are getting an advance on on this really cool product that literally no one else is going to have yet. And they're they're so cute. <laughs> <laughs> even You know what? Even if they made an emoji of your face, it would be cute, Bill. Oh, that's very true. Um, I, I know that Star Trek.com has some of these emojis as stickers, which are really yeah. cool. But mm -hmm. to have these as the the pins with the infamous fansets quality is going to be amazing. So head on out to the Trek Geeks Twitter page. Find this week's episode. It'll be pinned to the top of the page. And, uh, and just follow the directions. And you could win. That's all we're going to say. Nice. And that does it for the news from treknews.net for the week of February 4th, 2021. Remember, for all the news on all the Star Trek CEO, please visit our great friends at treknews.net. Have a great week, everyone. Live long and prosper. Coconut. Uh, chicka, uh, coconut. Uh,